Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I thought I would sit down, relax, get in my place of zen, do some crafting, and talk to you guys about fitness and bulking. And I uh, had a subscriber ask a question here that I will link for you guys, and uh, man, I love it when you guys ask me stuff like this. It makes my job so easy, because I don't have to come up with video ideas when you guys ask awesome questions like this. It lets me be lazy. I can just turn the camera on and answer your question. Alright, so essentially what he is asking though is because of what I said about fat storage, de novo lipogenesis, all that stuff in the Durian Rider video the other day, or was it yesterday? Who knows? I don't count these things. Would someone gain less fat on a really low fat, high carb diet if they're bulking, if they're trying to bulk gain weight? And uh, do they really need dietary fat beyond what's needed for fatty acids and essential fats. All right, excellent question. Uh, to cover the first part, uh, the second part, let's just jump to that first and then we'll get into all the other stuff. As far as needing more fats than you need for essential fats and to absorb fat soluble vitamins, evidence says no, not really. Now we could argue about for hormone production. However, what people need to keep in mind uh, part of your de novo lipogenesis that occurs would be if you're eating so low fat and so high carb that you're not getting enough lipids to make some of your hormones but you're eating a calorie surplus such as you're going to be when you're bulking and gaining weight uh, you will actually be able to form a lot of the cholesterol with your own body using the carbohydrates that convert into lipids through de novo lipogenesis uh, to do that because we do know that when carbs go really high and fat goes too low your body can start slightly increasing to novo lipogenesis but part of that will be utilized to uh, create the backbones the cholesterol backbones and stuff you need for hormones and other functions in the body it's not doesn't mean it's necessarily storing it purely as body fat and that's what people need to understand your body can create certain types of fats on its own it just can't create the essential fats the omega-3s the omega-6s uh, things like that. And yeah, your concern could be also absorption of your fat soluble vitamins. But that comes down to, um, you know, are you consuming them or not? Meaning, you're absorbing them if, you, if they're in your diet. You just need certain amounts of fatty foods in your diet. And you can look at the breakdown of your diet and see if you're getting your fat soluble vitamins. But you don't need uh, large amounts of fat for that. And the main concern is going to be the omega-3 and omega-6 in your diet. And there's, uh, those are easier to get if you just eat some foods that have them in them, enough of them. Like if you're eating enough greens, green vegetables, or some nuts and things like that, a little bit of them, uh, you're probably going to be okay there. Although you could always supplement omega-3 if you need to. It's not that hard to do today. One of the few supplements that might actually have some uses. So let's go to the other part. The answer is maybe. A big maybe. In some cases, the answer is yes. In other cases, no. Uh, yeah, you do have the highest chance to gain the lowest amount of body fat bulking if dietary fat is lowest. Again, as long as hormone production is maintained, which again, usually not hard to do in a calorie surplus. It's when calories get too low, hormones become a bigger and bigger problem for fat intake. And particularly when you're, you get into a really large caloric deficit. So, why is it that this is going to happen? Simply put, because you're not going to be, unless you eat a very excessive amount of calories, you're not going to be storing enough carbohydrates as body fat to make a significant difference. Again, you've got to way overeat to see that happen. Like if you're only on a small surplus, three, 400 calories a day, you're probably not going to store any of your carbs as fat. It's just not going to happen. So let's say you're consuming a 3,500 calorie diet, your maintenance is 3,200, almost a 10% surplus, slow weight gain. Well, you're going to, let's say you go with 10% dietary fat, which is a very low fat diet. 10% is pretty low by most standards. Uh, so around 300 fat calories. Let's say your body, because what's going to happen here, the more carbs you eat, the more carbs you burn for fuel. So you need to keep that in mind. Your fat burning is going to drop low unless you're using some drugs to facilitate fat burning or something else in your uh, life to facilitate burning actual fat. You're going to tend to burn the carbs for fuel. So you might only end up burning, uh, 
you know, 150 fat calories throughout the day for whatever your metabolic functions are, leaving you 150 left to possibly store. Assuming your body does it efficiently, which it doesn't, it's not 100% efficient, you know, you might be gain, storing 100, 150 calories of, of fat every day overall in your total net. Uh, and again, you're going to lose some of that also, so it gets tricky. So at most, maybe 100 calories of it. Well, that's a very, very small amount of fat. That is essentially around, what, maybe 3,000 calories of fats being stored every month. That's just under a pound. One pound of body fat gain a month on an actual bulk is pretty good. I would say that's fantastic, in fact. So, yeah, it has a potential for that, but if you were to eat a larger amount of fat, let's say a higher fat diet, uh, 30% or so fat, maybe a little higher, 32, 33%, whatever. So whatever it takes to get you to 1,000 calories of fat, let's say your body increases fat burning and you end up burning five or 600 calories of fat every day because, again, you're giving it enough carbs. Carbs are going to be the preferred fuel source. You're going to end up storing more. I mean, you could end up gaining possibly two or three more pounds of body fat every month on the same number of calories um, that way. In some cases, it's not guaranteed though. What you have to remember though is that when you're overeating carbs, you're not in the same caloric surplus because your body, if it's not getting so many that it's gonna store them, it does tend to increase the thermic effect. It tends to burn them off as fuel if you're very insulin sensitive, meaning you're highly physically active. Uh, so you're just going to be less likely to also be in a higher caloric surplus. So it gets really tricky. It's a hard question to answer because it's hard to predict how the thermic effect of the calories is going to go. It's hard to predict how much thermic effect your muscle cell mitochondria are going to increase this. And once drugs go into the mix, forget it. Forget even calculating anything at all. Other than to say that if you're on hefty amounts of drugs and you're not eating a lot of dietary fat, you're probably not going to gain any fat at all. So, pretty straightforward there. So, I mean, I gave you guys a best case scenario, like the most extreme case, depending on a person's body. Yeah, it could be a couple pounds difference per month. But realistically, uh, it may not be a noticeable difference. So that's just one scenario I could break down for you guys. We could look at it different ways. But the other factor to consider there of why should you probably do a higher carb, lower fat bulk, um, quite simply, the overall training effect and nutrient partitioning. For weight training and strength training purposes, again, this is different for endurance athletes. You're an endurance athlete, you should probably be, be considering consuming a fair amount of fat unless you're able to carb load during the endurance itself. Like if you're able to continue to eat during the training, totally different. Uh, in which case carbs are fantastic. But for someone who can't eat during, say, a long marathon or some long endurance event, you're going to need some fat in the diet. But for most forms of training, carbs are simply a superior fuel source. You're going to have more training fuel to work with. Uh, the more carbs you can load into yourself, the more you can train. The more training fuel you'll have before you uh, your tank runs low. The more intense your workouts are going to have the potential to be. It's not guaranteed. You know, that's what we're talking about with some of this stuff. We're not talking about big differences. Sometimes these little discussions of minutia are about a half a percent advantage. That's it. That's all you gain sometimes. And it could be that much difference on the body fat side too. The higher carb, lower fat diet has the best potential to give you a slight performance boost with maybe the smallest amount of fat gain. So for someone who's really trying to maximize body composition, it's probably the wiser approach. Is it going to be a tremendous difference though? Probably not. It's going to depend on a lot of factors. Uh, some people that might be a more noticeable difference than others, but it's just going to give you the best potential. But if that's not how you prefer to eat, that doesn't give you the best satiation, the best mood, it's going to be a fairly small difference. So it might not really matter enough to make a difference. And that's the thing that people need to realize when it comes to these talks. We're talking about small differences and sometimes maximizing your body composition or your performance if you're not a serious competitor of some type and maybe if you are a serious competitor of some type might not be worth the reduced quality of life for you some people just need more fat in their diet to be happy and at the end of the day if they enjoy more fat in their diet and you know what it doesn't have to be day to day 
Uh, you don't have to eat the same ratios of fat and carbs every single day. Another factor people don't grasp, you can actually vary things, change things up. It's not the end of the world. But you've got to remember that, that if it's really impeding your quality of life because you're eating foods that you just don't like, you find it too bland, well, okay then. Uh, most of us are into fitness and we're into lifting to feel better, to be happier, to have a better quality of life. And quality of life does include food taste, mood satiation. That's part of your quality of life. So that's what you have to balance out with it. You have to balance out with the fact of do you enjoy eating that way enough for it to justify the minor potential differences in body composition and training performance. And that becomes a highly individual question that no formula that we could come up with in a video is going to answer for you. The answer to that one is, well, it just depends on the person. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.